قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَكُمْ Say it is he who has created you وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ And he is the one who has made for you the hearing, the vision and the hearts قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Very little is it that you give thanks Very little is it that you offer gratitude for these faculties that Allah has given you Allah has given you these faculties hearing, seeing, hearts just so that you use them for dunya? No. So that you use them to see the truth. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَكُمْ And insha, what does that mean? To create, to cause, to rise. So He is the one who has produced you and He hasn't produced you blind and deaf and unaware. No. He has given you the ability through which you can learn. Hearing through which you can hear the truth. Basar, vision, through which you can reflect and see the truth. Af'idah, hearts, through which you can feel. Qalilam ma tashkurun. And ma over here is zayd that is extra. And what does it show? That very little is it that you offer gratitude. That shukr is qalil, in quantity. And then the time that you spend offering gratitude, even that is very little. What is shukr for a blessing? Hmm? Shukr, remember, it's done in three ways. Remember? How? Bilqalb, Bilisan, and also Bil Jawarih. That Bilqalb, you realize in your heart that it's a blessing. On the tongue, you express gratitude. You say Alhamdulillah. And by the limbs, meaning that you use that blessing in the proper way as well. So when Allah has given us all of these faculties, some basar of idah, then what does it mean? We should be using them in the proper way as well. But what does Allah say? قَلِيلَ مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Very little is it that you offer gratitude. Meaning you don't use them in Allah's obedience. You don't use them in order to please Allah. But you use them only to satisfy your desires. Now how can a person use his ears, his hearing in obedience to Allah? How can he be grateful for the fact that he can hear? How? Listening to all that which is good, listening to that which is beneficial. What else? Okay, avoid listening to those things which Allah does not like. Good. What else? Listening attentively. Paying attention as well. Like for example, when the Qur'an is being recited, what are we to do? Listen how? Attentively, silently. Remember the jinn? In Surah Al-Ahqaf, what did they do? فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا be quiet, pay attention, listen attentively. So Allah has given us hearing, ears, we can listen with them. So how should we be grateful to Allah for this faculty of hearing? That when the Qur'an is recited, be quiet, listen attentively, pay attention. And don't just listen to the words, but ponder on them as well, reflect on them as well. Relate it with your life as well. Summer, hearing. Then after hearing, absar. How can we be grateful for the basar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? Just lower your gaze. What else? Avoiding seeing that which Allah does not want us to see. Okay. But what is it that we should see that Allah will be happy with? For example, reading. Using your eyes to read. Read what? That which is beneficial. Because sometimes we have a lot of time on us. Huh? There are books and books available to us, things that we could read and benefit ourselves with, but we don't bother. Isn't it so? We don't bother. So you have the time, you have the ability, you have the vision, you can see, you can read, use your eyes then. And be grateful for these eyes. How else? Looking at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So many times Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا أَلَمْ تَرَوْا Why? Because Allah wants us to see. Allah wants us to open up our eyes, reflect, use our vision. Look at what Allah has created. And don't just look at it and say, ha ha. But rather, when you look at something beautiful, nice, unique, then thank Allah for it. Because قَلِيلَ مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Basar is not just about looking, it's about taking a lesson as well. Insight. Basira. Right? Insight. Taking a lesson as well. So, look 
at the creation of Allah Look at the things around you Appreciate them Thank Allah for them Praise Allah for them And then also take a lesson for yourself from them Then Afida Hearts How can a person be grateful for The heart that Allah has given him And remember that there is a difference between Fuad and Qalb Qalb generally is used for The heart when the intellect Or understanding Rationalization That is the focus And Fuad is used The emotions They are the focus So the emotional heart How can a person be grateful For that Being grateful Having love Having fear Having hope All of these are what? Emotions Right? So having positive emotions Towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But what about people? Husnul zan Positive thoughts about other people as well Instead of thinking See they're upset with me She's angry with me No Have positive thoughts about other people Sometimes a person reads the Quran Hears something Sees something And it affects him He can feel it in his heart So when it has affected your heart so deeply Don't just cry over there Shed a few tears over there But actually do something When it has moved your heart Then that should move you as well It should move your actions as well It should translate in some behavior Yes Being thankful through actions So وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Very little is it that you are grateful And if you think about it really How much time do we spend in a day Being grateful to Allah How much time Allah says قَلِيلًا مَا Very little time And even the gratitude that you do offer That's very little So these faculties Allah has given you Not so that you just keep using them Using them or abusing them huh? But rather you use them in the good way And be grateful to Allah for them as well Yes Sometimes we think that You know shukr has to come naturally You know I just don't have that feeling yet This is why I can't read good stuff This is why I can't listen to good stuff You know it's not coming from the heart And if it's not coming from the heart I'm not going to bother No Sometimes you have to train yourself as well You have to push yourself as well And when you start doing something Eventually you get into the habit So it might be difficult for you to listen to something good To read something good To think positively about others However, if you train yourself If you keep doing it Eventually it will become a part of you Isn't it so? So offering shukr is not always easy It is difficult, it is challenging The Prophet ﷺ when he would stand up in prayer all night And his feet would swell up, what would he say? أَفَلَا أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا So being an Abdun Shakur Is not something very very easy No It's difficult You have to bear the difficulty You have to challenge yourself But there's no other way You have to do it We should make dua to Allah That Allah make us of those few people who are Grateful to you قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي ذَرَأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Say it is he who has multiplied you throughout the earth ذَرَأَ ذَال رَا هَمْزَ And what does that mean? To create and disperse To create and spread So he is the one who has created you and scattered you فِي الْأَرْضِ Throughout the earth All over the earth And since he is the one who has scattered you وَإِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ He will also gather all of you Because the one who has scattered the people on this earth, he will also assemble them together. وَإِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ You're not here forever. He has distributed you throughout the earth and a time will come when all of you will be gathered together for the purpose of حِسَاب for the purpose of jaza. And it's only logical that when he has scattered you, he should gather you. If you think about it, a farmer, when he spreads his seeds in his field, hmm, what happens eventually? Plants grow forth, right? The crop comes out. But then does he just abandon the crowd and never bothers to even look at the crop and never bothers to harvest it? No. If he has scattered the seeds, if he has been maintaining the crop, what will he do eventually? He will also harvest them. No logical person would just abandon the crop. It doesn't make sense that you scatter something and then you don't gather it. No, you will gather it together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
the one who is Quddus, the one who is most perfect, the one who is above any deficiency, any fault, how can it ever be imagined that he scattered all the people on the earth and he will not gather them together? Of course he will gather them together. Because if he will not gather them, it means that this act of creating and dispersing was useless, was meaningless. And Allah is above doing anything that is useless and meaningless. So wa ilayhi tuhsharun to him you will be gathered, and he will definitely call you to account. Wa yaquluna and they say, mata hadha alwaadu. When will this promise be? Meaning this promise of resurrection. When will it be fulfilled? In kuntum sadiqin, if you are truthful. Whenever the day of judgment is mentioned, whenever hashr is mentioned, whenever hasab is mentioned, what do people wonder? Okay, so when will it be? What does Allah want us to do? Prepare for it and not just wonder about when it will be. It is the way of the disbelievers that they would say, when will this promise be fulfilled if you are truthful? Because they doubted it. Isn't it so? They doubted it. So a person who has yaqeen in the hereafter, he will not question when will it be, what will he do? He will prepare for it. قُلْ Say, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Indeed, its knowledge is only with Allah. Its knowledge is only with Allah. The knowledge of what? The word, the promise as to when it will happen, when it will occur, when it will come. Its knowledge is exclusively with Allah. No one else knows about it. And as for me, وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ The Prophet ﷺ is told to say that indeed I am only a warner. Meaning my duty is to just warn you, convey the message to you very clearly, and I have done my job. I have warned you about the coming of the Day of Judgment repeatedly, in clear terms. I have done my responsibility. And when the Day of Judgment is going to come, that knowledge is only with Allah. And only He will bring it about. I am here to warn you, so that you can prepare so prepare for that day. And we see over here that the messenger does not have the knowledge of the unseen. Because what do we see? إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ Allah. Its knowledge is only with Allah. So the messenger does not have the knowledge of the unseen. He only knows that which Allah has informed him of. And the same is the case with the rest of the people as well. So no one can claim that he knows what's going to happen in the future, when such and such will happen. No. We can guess, but we can never say for sure. We can hope, but we can never say that we're predicting. No. إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّمَا أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ زُلْفَةً But when they see it approaching, zulfa, زَاي لَامْفَ What does zulfa mean? That which is قريب, that which is close, that which is near at hand. That which is on its way and is very, very close. And this is in place as well as in darajah, in rank. So, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ زُلْفَةً When they see it approaching, when they see the punishment, the promise coming, being fulfilled, meaning when the Day of Judgment is being established, what will happen to these people? See at وُجُوهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The faces of the disbelievers will become distressed. See at Seen well, Hamza. This is actually suwiat, fu'ilat. Okay? And from suwiat, it became si'at. Majhul. Ma'adhi majhul. Okay? So si'at, it was distressed, it became worried, it became sad, it was gloomy. And we learn elsewhere that their faces will be black. So si'at wujuhul ladina kafaru. You'll be able to see the distress on the faces of the disbelievers. Why will they be distressed? Because they will know what's going to happen to them. Because they were warned, but they didn't prepare. And it wasn't that they didn't know. They were told very clearly all of the details. So when they see the Day of Judgment being established, you will see the horror on their faces. وَقِيلَ And it will be said, هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تَدْعُونَ This is what you were asking for. This is what you used to call for. This is what you used to request for. تَدْعُونَ is from إِدْدِعَاء and what does iddia mean? To ask for something. So this is the punishment that you were hastening for. You always used to say, when will it be? When will it be? So here it has come. And tadda'oon also is understood as you used to make claims about. What claims did they make about the hereafter, about the Day of Judgment? That it will never happen. Right? This is the claim that they made. 
that there will be no resurrection. We will never be resurrected. You made great claims about it, but this is it. The day of judgment has come. هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تَدْعُونَ So we see in this ayah that those who doubt, those who disbelieve in the day of judgment, those who doubt the coming of the punishment, whether it's in this dunya or in the hereafter, when it will come, what will happen? Their faces will be distressed. Their faces will be grieved because they will know what is awaiting them. In Surah Az-Zumar, Ayah 47 to 48, we learn, وَبَدَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ وَبَدَا لَهُمْ سَيِّئَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ That there will appear to them from Allah that which they had not taken into account. They never thought the Day of Judgment would come, but it will come. And that which they used to mock at the Day of Judgment, the punishment, it will come right before them. We we'll listen to the recitation and then we'll continue. Many times it happens that people who have a non-serious attitude, what do they do? They keep waiting for things to happen, for the warning to come into effect. Isn't it so? Even in worldly affairs, in worldly matters, they keep waiting, they don't do anything. And when it finally comes, then you can see the sadness, the terror, the horror on their faces. Because someone who has prepared, someone who has done his best, he's not worried. Isn't it so? Who is worried? Someone who is unprepared and who has been very neglectful. Right? So, the same attitude, those people who have it with regards to the Akhirah, when the punishment comes, see at wujuhul ladina kafaru. Let's listen to the recitation. Qul ara'aytum. Say, have you considered, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say to these people, that have you considered, in ahlakani Allahu, if Allah destroyed me, meaning if Allah gave me death, wa man ma'iyya, and whoever is with me as well, meaning and whoever has believed. If Allah gave death to me, and also to the believers. Remember that the word halak, is used for destruction and it's also used for death. It doesn't necessarily mean evil death, I mean bad death that a person was destroyed and punished and as a result of that he died. No, it's also used for death. What's the evidence of that? أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْهَالِكِينَ Good. In Surah Yusuf we learned that the sons of Yaqub they said to him that you will تَاللَّهِ تَفْتَأُ تَذْكُرُ يُوسُفَ You will keep remembering Yusuf until you will become fatally ill haradan aw takuna min al-halikin right similarly we learn in surah an-nisa as well in imru'un halaka if a person dies hmm? so then his property his estate will be distributed in such and such way so in ahlakani allah wa man ma'iya if allah caused me death if allah gave death to me or those who are with me aw rahimana or he bestowed mercy on us what does it mean by that meaning he lets us live for a longer period of time. فَمَنْ يُجِيرُ الْكَافِرِينَ Then who will save the disbelievers مِنْ عَذَابٍ alim From the painful punishment. يُجِيرُ From the root letters جِيم وَوْرَى جَوْر جِوَار What does جِوَار mean? To be a neighbor. Right? And إِجَارَة Is to give shelter to someone, to give protection to someone because that is what neighbors are expected to do. Protect one another. So whether we live or we die, who will save the disbelievers from the painful punishment? We see that the mushrikeen of Makkah, they would hope for the death of the Prophet ﷺ. We have learned about Rayb al Manun, right? They would hope for death for him. Why? Because they would say, you know, he will die, all of this matter will be over, he will die, his companions, if they die, then very soon, this religion that he has come up with, it will come to an end, it will extinguish, and very soon things will go back to normal. This is what they wanted. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling His Messenger to say that will the punishment go just because we are dead? Will the punishment go away from you just because we are dead? No. If you are guilty, the punishment will come upon you whether we are alive or we are dead. It doesn't make a difference. So what does it show? That when a person is guilty, when a person deserves punishment, then the punishment will come to him inevitably. The birth of someone, the death of someone, being alive of someone, it doesn't make a difference. Because each person's matter, each person's affair is with who? Is with his Lord. You understand? 
So they wanted the Prophet ﷺ to die. But Allah says to the messenger that say, tell them, if I'm alive or if I'm dead, what difference does it make? The punishment that has to come upon you, it will come upon you if you're guilty. So my being alive, my being dead cannot save you. You have to do something yourself. You have to do something to save yourselves. فَمَنْ يُجِيرُ الْكَافِرِينَ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ this ayah has been understood in another way as well. Some have said that ahlakani means if he punished me. And he punished the believers. Or he did not punish us, meaning he was merciful to us. Then, in other words, we are afraid of the punishment of Allah. We being believers are afraid of the punishment of Allah. And you being disbelievers are not afraid? We being believers are between khawf and raja, between fear and hope. And you being disbelievers, have no fear. فَمَنْ يُجِيرُ الْكَافِرِينَ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Who can save the disbelievers from the painful punishment? قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ آمَنَّا Say, He is the most merciful. We have believed in Him. آمَنَّا بِهِ The one whom we worship, who is He? الرَّحْمَانُ And آمَنَّا بِهِ We have believed in Him. وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا And upon Him we trust. He will protect us. He will take care of us. فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ Soon you will know. مَنْ هُوَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Who is it that is in clear error? Is it us or is it you? Soon time will tell. Soon situations will show. The turn of events will show that who is right and who is wrong. And this is a fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the reality in this dunya even. Only up to a certain extent the wrongdoer can do whatever he wishes and feel that he is right. But very soon, Allah seizes him, Allah catches him, and he shows to the people who is right and who is wrong in reality. And if it doesn't happen in this world, definitely in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show to the people who is right and who is wrong. From the smallest of matters to the greatest of matters. From family issues to greater nationwide issues. So any matter of conflict... Who is right, who is wrong? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows it to the people in this dunya and also in the hereafter. فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ هُوَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ Say, have you considered, have you ever thought about it? إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا If your water became غَوْر غَوْر What does غَوْر mean? Deeply underground. غَوْر is from the root letters غَيْن وَوْرًا From the word غَار And what does غَار mean? Cave. Whatever is in a cave, it is hidden. Isn't it so? And ghal, remember, is used for a huge cave. Okay? So, something in a huge cave, in a big cave, deep, hidden. So, ghawr is that which is deep, that is hidden, that you cannot access, it's in the dark. So, if your water becomes ghawr, meaning it goes deeply underground, sunken, so that you cannot access it. It becomes inaccessible. If it was to sink deep down into the earth, فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا إِمْ Then who would come to you with flowing water? Who would bring you flowing water? Ma'een is from the root letters. عَيْن يَا نُون عَيْن And what does عَيْن mean? I. Right? So from this ma'een is used for water that is flowing on the surface of the earth that is visible to the eye that you can see. So who will bring you water that is flowing at the surface of the earth that you can actually see? If all of the water of the earth goes deeply underground, who can bring it to the surface so that you can see it? No one can bring it. And marine is also derived from the root letters meem aynun, ma'ana, which is to flow. So marine, running water, flowing water, whether it's in the form of a river or a stream, or a sea, or anything like that. فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا إِمْ So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us that if He takes away the water on this earth into the depths of the earth, is there any way that you could retrieve it? Is there any way that you could retrieve it? No, it would be impossible for you. Your machines would prove useless. Your technology would prove useless. If Allah decides not to let you enjoy water, you cannot get water from anywhere. So if you enjoy water, looking at water, listening to the sound of water, drinking that water, 
feeling that water, bathing with that water, this is what? A huge favor of Allah. This is His kindness upon you. And these blessings that Allah has bestowed on you, use them properly. Be grateful for them. Don't abuse them. Because remember, you are in His mulk. Everything you enjoy is out of His grace. It's not that you deserve it. So when you enjoy these blessings, don't forget Him. Don't become arrogant because of them. Remain submissive. And learn from the creation of Allah how submissive it is to Him. And you too become submissive. Recitation. So in this surah, on one hand we see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His might, His glory, His jalal, His qudra, His azama that we see everywhere, we find everywhere, up in the sky, in the earth, the beautiful sky, the night sky. In so many ways, this qudra, this azama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shown to us. And on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also shows to us the helplessness of human beings. The reality of human beings. That how weak they are. The birds even are able to do what people cannot do. And people are so helpless, so helpless, that if Allah decides to take away their water, if Allah decides to withhold his risk, then people cannot do anything at all. This is the helplessness of man. This is the reality of man, that he has no power. He is completely dependent on Allah. So what is it that we should do then? We should realize our reality. We should realize our reality that we are nothing. And as a result of that, we should do what is required of us. When we are nothing, when we have no power to defend ourselves, to protect ourselves, to provide for ourselves, what does it mean? We are dependent on Allah. And what is it that Allah wants us to do? Ahsan amal. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. Because when a person does ahsan amal, only then he can please Allah. And if a person does not please Allah, then no one can help him. No one can protect him. No armies, no jund, no technology, no knowledge, no power, nothing can help him. The one who does not please Allah, then what does he become? A loser. An ultimate loser, an ultimate failure. Because he cannot protect himself in this dunya and in the akhirah, see at wujuhu ladina kafaru. But unfortunately, what is the way of many people? That their focus is pleasing who? Others. Not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact is that if the whole world is happy with you, and Allah is unhappy with you, then, again, you're a loser. There's a verse of Arabic poetry. A poet once said, يَظُنُّ النَّاسُ بِي خَيْرًا وَأَنَا لَشَرُّ الْخَلْقِ إِنْ لَمْ تَعْفُ عَنِّي The people think good of me. The people think very highly of me. But I would be the worst of people if you do not forgive me. The people may think very highly of me. They may love me. They may be very impressed by me. But if Allah does not forgive me, then I am the greatest loser. I am the worst of all. Because this is the reality of human beings. They can please everyone. But if they don't please Allah, they are losers, failures. And the only way to please Allah is through Ahsan Amal. Alladhi khalaqa al mawta wal hayata liyabluakum ayyukum ahsan amala. Wa huwa al aziz al ghafur. So don't forget him. Let's listen to the recitation. Let's listen to the recitation of these verses from ayah number 15. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.